In this video, we're going to be discussing direct response marketing and really determining if it's right for your business. Now, according to Seth Godin, there are actually three types of advertising. He's coined direct response advertising, truth advertising, and demand enhancement advertising. Now, if your business has a limited budget, which most of us do, let's just admit it, we're starting out, we don't have a ton of money to throw at stuff. So which one should we be using? First, let's go through and figure out which each of those are. Now, the first one he talked about was direct response advertising. This is probably the one that you're the most familiar with, at least in terms of internet marketing and online marketing, because it works the same way as these old school mailers. So when you get direct mail pieces in, their first step is they've got to put a strong headline on the envelope to get you to open the envelope. Then they've got to put even better headlines that are on those mailers to get you to read through them. Then you got to actually take action with certain call to action that encourages you to fill out some sort of form or call to get your, your credit card number and take action on whatever they want. So very, 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 very difficult things that these mailers have to do. And that's where a direct response came from. Now today, it's all about virtual channels like email and social media, AdWords, Facebook, and it can be targeted based on pretty much anything, including geography and pretty much whatever demographic you can possibly imagine. People with kids, without kids, own homes, don't own homes, like Facebook, don't like Facebook, any of that stuff you can target. And if it's done right, it actually leads to fairly immediate results. You can send a bunch of traffic to a sales page, to an opt-in, and you can get results within hours in some cases. The entire process also very, very measurable. In fact, it's pretty much based on metrics. So anything from unopened emails to actual conversions that you might get can be tracked. And for the most part, you can tell if you can tell what's working, what's not, you can then replicate and scale your system, meaning basically add more money to the advertising campaign itself. So in a nutshell, that's direct response. Now there is what they call truth advertising or what Seth Godin calls truth advertising. This has basically also been known as brand advertising. And essentially what it is is when advertisers promote themselves with a version of the truth that they want you to know and repeat. So you've got this, you know, M&M's Better Them campaign that they've done, um, basically just saying, here's a story about ourselves. Here's a story about our brand. We want to make sure that you are, that we are known as a brand in your mind and we are top of mind. So when you're going through the grocery store, and in this case, you're feeling like a little bit of candy, M&M stands out because you've got this brand, you've got these characters that you're associating with the brand. Those promote certain emotions that start flooding in your brain when you see this candy and you, you associate all this sort of positive story and all that advertising that comes through with that brand comes through and can lead to a purchase. Now, that whole process, not very measurable, very, very difficult to tell if it's working or not, other than are people talking about M&Ms. The other thing is demand enhancement. Now, this is actually creating demand, whereas truth advertising is more just there to promote the brand and keep it top of mind, but it doesn't really create the need. Something like this idea, which is pretty cool that we found, the Sprite shower idea, that's pretty cool because not only does it take care of something and in your advertising, in this case, Sprite, but it can also kind of make you thirsty. I mean, just looking at it, really, it's a big giant soda machine, but it's technically a shower, right? So people are there and they're kind of thinking, oh, you know what, let me go grab a drink. And it can create demand when there was nothing there. But again, very difficult to measure. And for promotions like this, these things can cost a fortune and are way outside the reach of most solopreneurs. So this leads us back to the question, if you have a limited budget, which one should you use to earn profits? Hands down, the most logical step here, all about direct response advertising. So here's a few pointers. We have a lot of this on our blog, and this is pretty much what we're going to be focused on. So if you want other pointers, make sure you check out Series of Simple Marketing. Um, but for now, some beginner pointers. You want to be very, very clear about what you want them to do. Maintain a conversational tone so you connect with the audience, but you have to have clear call to actions. That's what that is all about. So if it's click here, then say click here to get this or download now to get this or, um, you know, continue or get started, but you want a very, very clear call to action. You want to use benefit oriented headlines. In most cases, people don't want to necessarily sign up, but they do want to download now because if your button says download now, they're getting something right now. They're downloading something that they can keep and own and they enjoy something like that. So make sure your headlines are benefit oriented. Keep the process as simple as you can. So the less clicks they have to take, the better and emphasize urgency. So if you have uh, plugins that are out there, there's lots of different countdown timers that you can use on, on themes like Optimize Press uh, 2.0, and they can count down and emphasize urgency where you can say, listen, this is only available for the next three days. And this is what launch mentalities come from. These launches that people do 
they have this certain select period of time that people can purchase something. And after that, the deal's done. And that is built-in urgency. And of course, set your success metrics. If you're not measuring what's working and what's not, you have absolutely no way to improve your results. So please, please, please take the extra time. And I know this is the, probably the worst part because a lot of people aren't numbers people. But if you don't track your open rates, if you're not tracking your click-through rates, if you don't understand of how many people see a page and then how many of those people are opting in so you know your percentage of your conversion rates, then you have no hope of improving your marketing. And if this is just not your cup of tea, then find somebody who it is their cup of tea. And there are people that are out there like that, I promise you. So go out there and make sure you're tracking what's working and what's not. So here we are, the marketing hack. Scan through all of your advertising materials that you've currently set up. This includes squeeze pages, maybe some sales pages, and see if they're more like brand-oriented stuff or are they asking for something? Are they asking for a direct response, a yes or no? Are they asking for a buy? Are they asking for a click? Are they asking for an email? find out. And if they're not, go through those guidelines that we mentioned earlier and make sure you edit your copy a little bit so that you are getting essentially that direct response. And of course, you want to split test. So make sure that you're always split testing and tracking the difference. Because even though we say benefit-oriented headlines work, and most of the time they do, there are occasional other headlines that sometimes may work better. And that's why you split test because your audience, your market is entirely unique. So it doesn't matter what other people are doing. I don't care who they are. It does not matter what they're doing. Just because it works for their market doesn't mean it'll work for you. So you need to go through and make sure you split test to verify. Of course, if you want more information about this or if you have questions over how you can split test or different topics or anything you want, please leave us a comment below. You can visit us at seriouslysimplemarketing.com. You'll see, of course, the blog post there. And uh, again, we're always looking for feedback. We love chatting with you in the comments, so please make sure you leave comments there. Thanks again for watching this video, and we'll see you on the next one.